Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Cutts and you're watching my video on placing a Strauman BLT implant with guided brain regeneration. So here we can see where the denture was. This is a delayed immediate implant placement protocol, approximately six to eight weeks after extraction. Just going to do a little papilla sparing incision to try and minimise the loss of the papillae that we already see due to the denture and the extraction of the pale tooth. You can see the previous scarring from a history of apisectomies following a trauma, which I think was uh, an equestrian accident. And we just make the crested incision and start just reflecting that back. See, we just just ease it back, dissect through. And then we just try and move the tissues, preserving the periosteum. Sometimes it's quite difficult when it's scarry. You can see here amalgam tattooing. Although there's no amalgam debris, they've got amalgam tattooing in the bone. And then we can start our pilot osteotomy with our little Lindemann type burr. It's a 12mm implant fixture. And we just move through the drill sequence, ensuring the RPM is correct. That's our direction indicator, just making sure that. The osteotomy is in the correct planes, buccopalatally and mesodistally, and apicocoronally. So we're aiming for a screw retain restoration. And you can see that we're maintaining the burr within the bony volume. That's our final direction indicator. Shows we've got good bone on the buckle aspect, but we're just going to need to rebuild that corner on the coronal shoulder. Good angulation for screw retain crown, good angulation in general. We just profile the coronal aspect of the uh, osteotomy. And sometimes we can collect the little bone chips. Here we have some cerebone. I'm just adding the autogenous bone chips to the cerebone. This is our 12mm Strauman BLT fixture. I always like to place these by hand so that you get a feel for how tight they're going in. Feel how, how much primary stability you're going to gain. This is our fixture in place. Sometimes you can use a, uh, like a three or four millimetre healing abutment to maintain thickness of tissue. As we close over, which is what I've done here, and we've got a Jason membrane. We just trim that up. You can see it's quite a narrow, flat design, so I just like to make a, a small tag so I can tuck, tuck the Jason in. It's always difficult to make it evenly trimmed when you've got curved scissors. wet it so with a pair of simple college tweezers and a boozer elevator we can tuck it through on the palatal side and obviously we need to add our graft particulate so I just reflect the Jason back I like to make sure I've got the autogenous chips close to the implant thread surface along with the mixture of cerebone that's it so you can see where I've speeded up the video here and we just keep rebuilding until we get the desired ridge form. And then if required, sometimes we need to just add another little periosteal release just to make sure we get passive tension-free closure. And we can begin suturing closed. So we're just gonna 
Suture clothes are a series of simple interrupted Try and pull them over to the palatal side. And it goes together nicely, nice and evenly. And just we'll close the relieving incisions. And then we do the distal relieving incision. Sure that's closed. Try and pull the knot away from the, the incision line. And I just like to make sure we get good closure all along the flat line. So another little interrupted. Looks good, and then just one more. And see everything approximates nicely, which is great. That's our implant surgery done in the aesthetic zone. So we'll leave that typically for 12, 10 to 12 weeks to just really mature. And then obviously always check that your, your dentures are going to fit and you likely need to adjust the neck of